President Biden's pandering is back. Biden kicking off his re-election campaign at a rally today with union workers, just days after the flaming hot movie night at the White House that clearly was a move to pander to Latinos. Hey, at least Biden is out of the basement. <laughs> what kind of campaign do you think you're going to have? You think it's going to be a nasty campaign this whole year? Well, it depends on who the nominee is. Hmm. And today, another minority Republican candidate for president slammed Biden's old boss, former President Obama, for his comments about race this week. Obama said Tim Scott and Nikki Haley are basically racist for their effort to quote America. Here's Republican hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy earlier. Frankly, I was disappointed in Barack Obama. I think he sets a poor example for the country when he tells us that we can't think independently, regardless of the color of our skin. I probably don't fit Ayanna Presley's description of what counts as a brown voice, but you better believe that's why it's important for folks like me, or Tim Scott or Nikki Haley for that matter, to speak our minds openly. And for my part, I commit to doing that throughout the rest of this campaign trail. I think it's going to be unifying for the country. Meantime, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is holding double-digit support in the polls in the Democratic primary. He opened up about the race and his vision for America in a lengthy sit-down with Joe Rogan. Watch this. I grew up so proud of this country. I grew up at a, a magical time in American history. I want my kids to grow up with that love for our country and that pride for our country. And I don't see the path from either political party getting us there at this point. The Democratic Party has become the party of war. But it seems Biden is ready for battle, I guess. Um, okay. Is he ready for battle? Because I'm not really even sure he's ready to wake up in the morning. <laughs> Joe Biden? Yeah, no, he apparently doesn't know what continent he's on or who's, or who's leading the, right. uh, the leader in the continent. Um, no, it's uh, disturbing, and it's, it's really interesting uh, listening to RFK. Um, his father and his uncle would not recognize the Democrat Party today yeah. if they were running today. And, and, and you go back to some of their sort, sort of more famous speeches. You went back. They would be in the Republican Party. They would be like right down the middle of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting, too, that uh, RFK has sort of played the role for the Democrat Party that uh, that Donald Trump played for the Republican Party. He's sort of challenging all of their orthodoxies, mm -hmm. uh, slaying all their sacred cows and willing to and, and actually getting attention. And obviously, um, you know, the, the Democrat Party is doing everything they can to sort of make him vanish. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I think he's one. I think he's the most inter you know certainly the most interesting person on that side of the aisle to watch. You know the president's way with words are really sometimes entertaining, <laughs> um, to say the very least. But um, if gaffes aside and running off prompter and obviously off script is one thing. But this man, man, I mean, he has a way with words like these, for example. I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> I know where the power is. Raul helped build this organization with the understanding that the diversity of this community, as distinct as the Bogas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio, <laughs> is your strength. But you can also track by race, there are averages in terms of the number of trees in the neighborhood where people live. You have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. <laughs> I don't even know how to follow up on that. Okay, so what they're trying to say is that they're pandering to whom? I'm not really quite yeah, exactly. sure. I don't get it. But, you know, for them, first of all, to attack Republicans who, in fact, uh, are minorities is really just talking out of both sides of your mouth because, quite frankly, a lot of Hispanics in this country voted Republican, and there's a reason right. for that because people who are here legally uh, do not want to see, you know, the border open to illegal immigrants who are flooding in and bringing their drugs and illegal Yep. narcotics into our country. So they need to actually listen to the minority, not pander to the whites. Right. Also, look at Florida. That's a perfect case study with yeah. what Ron DeSantis was able to do in Florida, and specifically Miami-Dade. Yeah. That's a big deal. We cannot underestimate what he's been able to do and what he will be able to do, potentially, if he is the nominee with the Hispanic and Latino community. Yeah. Donald Trump as well. I think a lot of Republicans are able to garner that support from that community, maybe even make some headway with the black community 
community and other minority communities was simply talking about the economy and parental rights is going to be a big thing. But, you know, when we sit here and we talk about the other candidates challenging Joe Biden here, let's be very clear about the Democrat Party. It's not about challenging Joe Biden. It's about the DNC deciding who's going to run. And if they decide it's not going to be Joe anymore, they're going to make that decision and they're going to install somebody else in that position. And I believe it's likely going to be Gavin Newsom. Yeah. So we can talk about RFK Jr. We can talk about the headway he's been able to make and 20 percent this and that. It really doesn't matter on the Democrat side. If they decide Joe is done, Joe will be done and Gavin will move into that spot. Watch it work. I mean, the Democratic Party has to know that if they reelect Joe Biden, you're electing Kamala Harris. I mean, that's basically right. it. He's 80 years old now. By the time he's done, he's what, going to be 86? 80. I mean, and he's not doing so hot right now. So I don't know. And, and what do you think of Ron DeSantis's comments earlier this week where he was saying, because you just mentioned Gavin Newsom, and my favorite quote of the week was, stop pussyfooting around. I mean, if I had a dime, how many times I'd tell people that? But I mean, Ron DeSantis even wants a different Democrat in the office, for mm -hmm. God's sakes. Like, what does that say to you about the Democrats? That they all they've got is Joe Biden. They need to find somebody else. Well, this whole idea and this notion that Joe Biden is not going to debate anybody tells us a lot. But I, I just wrote a book. It came out last week. It's called The Puppeteers, The People Who Control, The People Who Control America. Yeah. And the whole idea and notion of this Puppeteers book is that they're very comfortable with Joe Biden. They like Joe Biden in this position because they can control him, right. what he does, yeah. what he says, where he goes. He's not threatening. He needs racism in order to, to, to move and divide the country into these convenient little boxes so that they can try to manipulate these people and, and, and get out the vote. Um, so it all plays into their plan. I, I, I really do believe that the puppeteers, they really do like Joe Biden because he'll do what he says. He may not execute it on You're the stage very right. well, yep. but that is the plan. It, it's unions. It's the administrative state. It, it, it's all sorts of people, the money managers, yeah. the George Soros of the world, the, the Black Rocks of the world. They all love having Joe Biden in that place. And he, he calls years, himself though. out uh, all the time because anytime he goes off script, he in fact says, oh, they're going to be so mad at me for this, you know, yeah. because I need to follow order right. because they are pulling the puppet strings and I am just their puppet. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.